For over a year, I have worked full time for a YouTuber with millions of subscribers called Ali Abdel. Initially, I worked as a writer, but for the last nine months, I've worked as his YouTube channel producer, which means I'm the person in the team responsible for his YouTube channel growth. And so in this video, I'm gonna go through seven lessons I've learned from Ali Abdel. In the past year, I've probably spent more time with Ali than almost anyone else in my life because from Monday to Friday, basically every week for the past year, I've been with him in the office, talking about videos, talking about the business, talking about life. And one of the biggest lessons I've learned from him is the idea of being a student. Around July last year, when I just joined the business, I kind of thought everything would be figured out. I felt like the team would know what they're doing. I felt like the business looked like from the outside that everything was like really organized. Everything was really systematic and they had it all figured out. They had all the answers. But the more time that I spent in the business and over the following few months, I realized actually everyone was kind of making it up and everyone was kind of figuring it out. And we still are to this day. We're still very much learning as we go. The student lesson is whenever Ali doesn't know something, he's very, very good at filling knowledge gaps and upskilling extremely quickly so that he does know about the thing. As soon as he recognizes that there's something to level up in, something to learn about. Recently, like sales and marketing was a bit of a skills gap for the business. He will read loads of books, listen to loads of podcasts and talk to loads of people about the things. And that approach has trickled down into the team and into my life. The idea that you can learn anything, that you can just read some books, talk to some experts, listen to some podcasts. That has been like a real transformation for me. Just being like a student of life, a student in every area and never assuming that you know everything there is to know about a subject. Anything that I don't know how to do, I can learn how to do it. I can learn how to video edit. I can learn how to make thumbnails. I can learn how to talk on camera. I can learn how to grow a YouTube channel. There's nothing I cannot figure out if I put in the time. So a few months ago, we hired a designer to help with some rebranding of some of Ali's socials and various parts of the business. Ali was under the impression that this designer would cost around $1,000 for the work that he was doing. And when the work was finished, the designer sent through an invoice and it was actually for around $5,000. And Ali questioned it. And the designer said that it was because in the contract, he'd actually laid it out quite clearly. It was gonna cost like this much per piece and that I would add up to around $5,000, not the initial 1,000 that Ali thought it was. And when the designer explained it to Ali, he was just like, okay, cool, fine, yep, yeah, $5,000. And when I heard that, that was one of those moments where it clicked to me that entrepreneurs and people who are very financially successful are not thinking in terms of numbers, they are thinking in terms of return. And so to engage with the designer in this case just wouldn't be worth the time, it wouldn't be worth the stress. We can make more money in different ways, it's just not worth the investment to actually like pursue that. The price that we are willing to pay as a team for different services is just so much higher than I imagined because when you think about, okay, if we pay a thousand dollars to improve this YouTube video in some kind of way, maybe it's a thumbnail, maybe it's a script, maybe it's a video editor. If we pay a thousand dollars and the video blows up and gets 2 million views, we will make way more money than that. So it's worth paying a thousand dollars potentially for a thumbnail, which is totally ridiculous. We actually haven't done that. We generally pay like $150 for a thumbnail, but in theory, it could still be worth it to do that because the return is so much bigger. The biggest lesson that I've learned in terms of money is that the best entrepreneurs think in terms of return, they do not think in terms of cost. So back in November 2022, last year, we decided to start posting loads of shorts on Ali's YouTube channel and taking shorts very seriously because there's an opportunity with shorts. They were blowing up quite a lot and we thought maybe there was a way that we could get loads of views. So we came up with a quick plan and we just started recording. Ali's approach to this was very much Let's just do the thing. Let's move fast and break things. Let's see what happens. Let's experiment. Let's just learn as we go. It was not a case of let's be really protective of the brand. Let's be really careful with the content that we make and take loads and loads of time to plan it, wait a few months and then start posting stuff. Let's just post, make sure the content is a value and iterate over time. And that whole journey with YouTube Shorts was really interesting for me. And it led me to learn this lesson of the power of action because over the next few months, we got tens of millions of views with YouTube Shorts and it was really fun, it was really interesting and we just learned as we went. We made mistakes and we tried to iterate on the stuff that we produced and we ended up producing loads of really good shorts. It was a lot of fun and we're still doing it. But it all came from that initial, okay, let's just do and let's not think too hard. Let's just be action biased and let's get moving. I've spoken a fair bit on this channel about the power of being action biased and the power of doing stuff, not thinking about stuff. And whenever you have a thought in your head or you have an idea, trying to bring it into reality rather than just ruminating on it and just thinking about it. But Ali is very, very good at that. Obviously there are certain scenarios where you do want to plan more and you do want to think more and you take more time. But a lot of the time, the best way to learn, the best way to move forwards, the best way to progress is just move fast, break things, be action biased and just do stuff. By the way, I write a weekly newsletter for creators and for aspiring creators to help you become a better and more efficient creator. So if you want to sign up to that, then the link is in the description and you can unsubscribe anytime if you want to, but I really wouldn't do that. Anyway, moving on. 
Back in March of this year, we went on a team retreat to Lisbon in Portugal for a week. And on the flight out there and on the flight back, Ali spent the entire time journaling. I've never known anyone to journal as much as Ali journals. It is kind of insane, but it has given me a really interesting insight into the power of journaling because he often doesn't know what he wants out of life and out of his business, but journaling is the mechanism that allows him to gain clarity over those things. And I've been journaling myself in various forms since around 2016, so for like seven years now. It's been really, really helpful for me, but I've never seen someone take it to the level that Ali takes it. It forces you to be self-aware and it forces you to understand yourself. And if you understand yourself, then you can make decisions that will help you build a life that you want and design a life that you want. And one thing that I find interesting about Ali's habit of journaling incessantly is that in this book, High Performance Habits by Brendan Burchard, there are six core habits of high performance that he lays out. Now, clarity, energy, necessity, productivity, influence, and courage. The first one is the most important one, clarity. Brendan says that to be a high performer, it is not that you always have clarity over your future, over what you want to do in your life. It's not something that you just have. Very, very few people just have it. It is that they generate clarity over time and they generate it by actively reflecting on the experiences that they have, by actively trying new things and reflecting on those things. I love this idea because I personally have often had a total lack of clarity and this channel is like about the quarter life crisis and about that time in your life where you have no idea what you're doing and no idea where you're going and you're trying to make all these big decisions and you don't know what to do and you don't know what to prioritize, whether you should value money or relationships or your career or where to live and all those kind of things. And it feels like a bit of a crisis and you don't really know what you're doing. The answer is to seek clarity and to generate clarity over time. And so for me to come into this business and to see Ali, this person who's on the other side of this like threshold in terms of money and success, it was really interesting for me to see that he was in this constant process of journaling all the time and figuring out what he wants and then taking decisions towards that. And it's not a like revolutionary idea, like writing in a diary is essentially all that journaling is, but there's just power in doing it consistently, having interesting journaling prompts, challenging the way that you're thinking, writing about different scenarios, writing about thought experiments where you imagine like different things happen in your life and imagining how you'd feel about those things. There's just so much power in the whole process of journaling. So that's the reflection lesson. I can't remember when I first heard this statement from Ali, but it was definitely before I started working for him. And it was this statement, post a YouTube video every week for two years and it'll change your life. He didn't guarantee anything to do with views or subscribers. It was just the idea that YouTube would change your life. I took him up on that. I started posting videos on my own channel in October, 2021, coming up two years ago and it totally changed my life. I ended up quitting my job three years later and I then got a job with Ali six months later after that. My life completely changed, went off in a completely different direction. That was one way that YouTube changed my life in terms of the actual direction that I was going. But it also had a massive impact on me and changed me hugely because of the process of making YouTube videos. It is so difficult in the first place to sit down in front of a camera to figure out how to use all the equipment, to write some stuff down, to think about what you're gonna say, and then to sit down in front of a camera and talk about it and talk about it confidently and comfortably and then watch it back on a computer and edit it and then post it online knowing that loads of your friends and family and the people in your network might see it. It is crippling. It is a really tricky process to go through. I found it really, really difficult. But I just knew that I wanted to go through this like transformation and getting across the other side of that barrier and being okay with that idea of having a YouTube video online. I still have to exercise that muscle of being like, it's okay. People are gonna watch the video. They'll think what they think. I'll be okay. I'm just proud of the fact that I made the video that I spoke into a camera and shared something useful, shared something that I've learned and posted it online. And someone hopefully will find it valuable. The people who don't like it, it's not for them. They don't have to watch it. They don't have to like everything that I post. And so there's just so many positive things that have come out of me starting a YouTube channel. And that's what everyone who has started a YouTube channel, who's been consistent with it, has said that it has changed their life. I genuinely feel that way now, being on the other side of it and having done it myself and keeping going, it is just just such an interesting thing to do because there's just so many skills involved. There's so many psychological hurdles involved. There's uh, business skills involved, like entrepreneurship skills involved if you want to monetize your YouTube channel. The YouTube lesson is that having a YouTube channel is a very fun thing to do. It's a very difficult thing to do, but there's just so much value in doing it, both for yourself, but also for the audience and for the viewers, because everyone has something to share. Everyone has something that someone else can learn from. So post a YouTube video every week for two years and your life will change. That is the YouTube lesson. One of the core parts of Ali's brand has become this statement, which was inspired from a quote from uh, the Brandon Sanderson's novels, the Stormlight Archive series. And the statement is life before death, 
strength before weakness, journey before destination. And Ali actually is very good at embodying this mantra of enjoying the journey. It's not about the numbers or the accolades or the achievements. It's about the journey of doing the things that you want to be doing and the people that you're doing them with, the people you impact, the memories you make, and all those kinds of cheesy things. The journey really is like the whole point. The journey is the destination. And whenever something like big happens in the team, Ali's actually really bad at celebrating the big stuff because he's kind of so focused on the process that like the whole three year journey that he's had of like writing a book, when the book was finished, it was kind of like, cool, nice, onto the next thing. And it's like, no, Ali, you actually do need to take a minute to, to celebrate the wins. He's like quite focused on this idea of process and the idea of journey over destination. And broadly, that is like a really good way to approach life because being too focused on the outcome that you want, about the destination, about the thing in the future that you're trying to get to. It's a bad way broadly to live your life. There's this lesson that we've made a YouTube short on, which I wrote called the arrival fallacy. And it's about how you think that when you arrive at the thing you want, when you arrive at like the A grade, the 100K salary, the uh, achievement in the future that you think will make you happy, you think will be the thing that fulfills you and gives you all the kind of nice feelings that you want. Actually, when you get there, when you arrive there, you don't feel that way. You actually just, the goalposts shift and you now are focusing on a new goal some uh, distance in the future. So the final lesson, I have a secret and it is that Ali Abdel is not as productive as you think he is. No, he actually is. He's actually pretty productive. And it's not really because he manages his time exceptionally well, which he does do, but he's also not like really, really insanely good at managing his time, like I imagine some people are. It's actually less about time management and it's actually more about energy management. So Ali's one of those people who just naturally has a lot of energy. And I think that is one of the biggest hacks in life is actually just having more energy than other people. And some people out there do just have more energy more of the time. And it means that they can do more things more of the time because they have the energy to do them. I used to think I didn't have enough time to like work out consistently or like do side hustles on the side of a full-time job. But actually it's just way less about having enough time than it is about having enough energy. Being around someone like Ali showed me that there are things you can do to just just like increase your energy levels. And a lot of it is just like finding the fun and having fun in the things that you're doing. And to try and like manually increase your energy levels by telling your brain, this is gonna be fun, it's supposed to be fun, all of that kind of stuff, all these kind of like mental gymnastics to just like increase the energy levels that you have so that you're just like, cool, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get moving, I'm just gonna like do the thing and all of that kind of just like, just do it attitude kind of stuff. But the thing that I haven't told you that I think you probably want to know is how I got a job working for Ali. And conveniently, I made a video about that last year. So if you wanna watch that, click here. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.